All right, everybody. Hello there and welcome. Sorry, I forgot to switch over my thing. I also need my controller. Make sure it's not tangled on anything. All right, we are ready to rock. Oh, Monday, 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 Monday. Hope that everybody has had a good time this Monday. Doing whatever it is that you do on Mondays. Ah, jeez. Ah, I always forget this one. I always get the rhythm weird, so it sounds goofy when I play it on the ocarina. All right, so I'm excited. Um, today is the day that we are going to finish off the Spirit Temple. Um, it is also the first day of Black History Month as well. It is February 1st. Oh my god, it's already February, you guys. It's crazy. So much ridiculousness going on. I, for one, am pretty excited. I've got some, I've got some pretty cool stuff um, going on um, that I'm looking forward to. Um, so I'm excited about some of that. Uh, it's going to be a pretty busy week for me. Um, overall stuff is going reasonably well at least. It's obviously nothing is ever perfect, but, you know, I'm trying, and right now it's, it's unfortunate because busy is okay. It's like, I, I like being busy sometimes, sort of. But it can also be very frustrating, um, especially being as busy as I am, um, because I tend to be like ridiculous. And busy. So it's um, it gets aggravating. But we'll see how things go. An interesting week ahead, but um, one thing I will say is that I'm I am looking forward to um, the fact that I've, I'm um, I'm looking to get my uh, what's it called? Um, oh my god, I can't remember what I was gonna say. Um, uh, shoot. Um, uh, I've got, um, I've got a quarantine tank set up for, um, for some fish. So I'm planning on getting some new fish for my tank. I also, um, I spent the weekend buying a bunch of corals. Um, one would argue that they're too many corals. I would argue no, because, like, I, I have literally bought nothing new for my fish tank in... I got two years almost something like that it, it has been a very long time since I've gotten anything new from my fish tank um, so I'm really stoked um, I've got ideas of what I want to get how I want to get them I'm doing the whole environmental sustainability with um, captive bred um, animals all of that kind of thing I'm just I, I, I'm excited I'm, I, I hope that it goes well um, I'm looking forward to it, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, like I said, my, my tank is actually already set up, and I even have a, um, I've even got little things like, um, uh, what are they called? Um, uh, I've got little testers that, um, check the ammonia and the pH installed. Um, so like they're just little stick-ons that check to see uh, to see what the levels of ammonia and the pH are because that's uh, that tends to be really dangerous for fish. I've got carbon filters. I'm going to be getting ammonia filters as well, um, just to be a hundred percent safe on things. And yeah, I mean, I'm just uh, I'm excited. Honestly, um, I'm looking forward to it. I just I'm. I'm always a little bit nervous with things like this because I always worry that I'm going to 
and have problems with the fish and everything. So I'm hoping, like hoping beyond hope type of thing that it goes well. Um, but I do not know how to get this. I feel like I'm probably missing something really stupid. Because the gold skeleton is in there. I feel like I need to be playing Breath of the Wild where I can use stasis so I can stop the, the rolling things and I'll be able to jump on top of them. Hey look, it's a wild Huinis! Hello, wild Huinis! Oh, you've got new stuff for your tank too. Did did you manage to um, did you manage to find the uh, the twenty long um, there, Rev? Managed to find one online or whatever. I mean, either way, like I, like I said, I'm I'm pretty stoked about getting um, getting my stuff set up. Um, it's it's gonna be some time yet before it's it's actually all done. Um, and the, the reason for that simply being that I, um, I, um, oh my god, what's the word? Um, the, the fish that I'm getting, uh, I have to leave them in quarantine for at least a week or so, um, just to make absolutely certain that they're okay and, um, acclimate them to my, like, situation and stuff like that. The exception is one specific type called a mandarin gobi. I've talked about it before. Um, it is a gorgeous, absolutely beautiful fish. And I'm going to get one that is captive bred. So I'm sticking with the uh, uh, with the whole environmental sustainability and all that kind of shtick. Um, so I'm really excited about that aspect. Um, the thing is that they're notoriously difficult to take care of. and. Uh, once I get it, I'm probably going to leave it in a small acclimation chamber inside of my, um, inside of my, um, what's it called? Inside of my, uh, tank for a good while, um, while I hope that it, um, uh, it can um, it can acclimate and um, be okay with like the the other tank mates and stuff like that uh, because that's that's one of the biggest things is that it it needs to be um, it, it needs to be okay essentially uh, the problem is that the captive bred ones are typically sold really early in their life cycle um, when they're only about half an inch long. So they're really, really tiny fish. And um, in this particular case, that means that um, the longer I wait, the better it's going to be. Because then, you know, like, yay fishy type of thing. I'm kind of curious what happens if I keep moving it. But, you know. Oh, you got a regular 20? <laughs> oh, no, not a stupid thing. Okay, that was my bad. That's what I get for being curious. Um, either way, I'm, I'm excited for it. Um, I, I can't wait to show you guys pictures. Um, incidentally, if anybody has, you know, like 1,500 bucks lying around that they don't need for, you know, food or other, you know, living essentials, please let me know, because um, one thing that I that I have really, really, really badly wanted to get is a, um, a macro lens for my camera, so I can take better pictures inside of my fish tank, and um, the, like the, it, it's, it's not top of the line, but kind of the mid-range one that, that I found is, um, is right about like 13 or 1400 something like that um so yeah if if any if anybody's got that kind of scratch lying around just you know burning a hole in your pocket and you have nothing to do with it then please send it my way 
because I, I really, really want to get it, um, especially with the new corals coming and everything. Uh, being able to take nice looking underwater pictures, it's, it's truly an art, even more so than ordinary photography is an art, in my opinion. Um, not to disparage photography as an art, obviously, because it is very much an art, but in the sense of, I know that it is a significant artistic endeavor, and I also know that like you you need good quality tools to get good quality stuff just like with any just like with anything i mean if you if you want to do well get well be well all that kind of thing then you need to have good things so um a macro lens has been on my list of stuff to potentially get for years at this point and I'm, I am hoping, really, truly hoping, that at some point I will be able to get one. I don't know if I ever will, but we'll see. <laughs> What's an art? <laughs> Stuff that isn't science. <laughs> I mean, it, it really is kind of like that, honestly. Like, you, you guys joke about, you know, being a spectrum and all this kind of stuff, but really, to a good extent, it's not wrong to say um, because there there is an art. Like, I'll, I'll give you guys a perfect example. There is a... Um, there is a, um, a technique, a molecular biology technique called a western blot it's named after the dude who invented it um and that's why it's called a western oh wait no did southern come first i don't remember basically we have southern blot western blot and northern blot one of them came first and it was named after the dude who made it and then the others kind of followed along even though they have nothing to do with compass points but the thing is that the the technique itself is not overly complex but getting it right and doing it well truly is an act of art like it, it legitimately is and don't let anybody tell you differently um and that goes with most molecular biology techniques like there is there is something about you know you're you work as a, a technician for 20 years or whatever and you become the best at some specific thing and there's a reason for it. It's because you've been doing it for years and years and years. Just like with anything else. And it's the exact same as science. And it's funny because um, people will, will joke uh, that when you're doing a graduate level degree, a master's or a PhD, then it gets to the point where uh, after you uh, after you reach a certain stage or not really after you reach a certain stage but rather um, once you get to the point of finishing up then it'll typically be a, a master's degree will typically be about two years and then a PhD it can range from anywhere between four years to seven years is relatively typical um, but the point is that after you've gotten there, then if you were to go back and do everything that you needed to do in order to get your PhD, do it all over again type of thing, then it would take maybe six months to do it all. Because far, far more than anything else when it comes to sciences is figuring out how to get things done and how to get things to work correctly. If you can do that, then nothing else really matters. And everything becomes super simple, honestly. See, I think that sounds like an awesome idea, Rev. I, I really love the idea of having the, uh, the, the school, especially. Get, he'll, oh, you'll get a loach? Oh, that's, that is really nice.
Like, it, it, I really love the pictures of your tank so far, Rev. Honestly, like, it's it, it may not be as big as you'd like it to be, but I think it looks really nice. I honestly do. I think it looks gorgeous. You should be really proud of yourself, frankly. For, for what it's worth for me. I mean, I, I don't do fresh water, obviously. Um, and I, I would argue that I barely do salt water. <laughs> but still, um, you know, it's... Again, I mean, it's it's a thing that's, that is very much an art, is, you know, any, any form of taking care of pets and animals and plants and all that kind of thing. Um... And so I, one of the things that I'm really excited about um, doing in the near future is I'm going to be starting up a garden. And the problem is that as, as part of starting up said garden, I also um, am going to need to make certain that... Um, I also need to make certain that the... Um, oh, the... What's it called? The... Um, that I get good quality tools and water and fertilizer and all that sort of thing. And in part, I'm actually going to be using my fish tank to help me out with my garden. So I'm pretty excited about that. I'm going to see if I can do this. So yeah, fun times, fun times. Oh, a shrimp and snail tank, nice. Oh, that's so cool. That loach is pretty adorable, I have to say. So these guys are mostly annoying more than anything else, honestly. Um, I do have I do have two fairies to revive me if needed. I'd rather not use them if I can avoid it. So for me, I'm the, the fish that I'm looking at getting, personally, I am looking at getting, in case anybody's curious, um, I'm looking at getting first a, um, oh my god, I'm trying to remember the names now, um, either a sailfin or a, um, or a um, horse face blenny, um, because they're algae eaters. And I've, I've been having an, al um, an algae outbreak problem ever since I upgraded my lights. Which is okay. Like, I, I have great lights now, so I'll be able to grow all of the corals that I want. Which, I am, like, you guys have no idea how stoked I am about this. Like, truly, I am, I'm super excited about it. Uh, being able to finally do all this stuff. Um, but, um, now I, I forgot what I was going to say. Um. So yeah, I got all of these. Uh, I've got all of these things done here, and um, oops. And uh, so okay, so either a horse face, uh, a horse face, or a sailfin blenny are most likely the ones that I'll be getting. Uh, one of those two, and then I want to get a dwarf angelfish called a coral beauty. So I've actually had a couple of those in the past, and um, uh, 
one of them did very, very well, and I, I actually had it for a really long time. Um, but then a jerk fish ended up killing him, and I, I am not a fan of jerk fishes. So I, I think I mentioned last time there's a, um, there's a sort of sect of, of um, fish that I just will not deal with. I, I don't I don't like them I don't want them um, the problem is that they are always um, listed out as being good for um, as being good for beginners um, they're called damselfish if anybody's interested um, and the problem with damselfish is that they tend to be very aggressive and territorial so while yes they are good in the sense of they're very hardy and they survive well the fact that they're giant jerk faces make them absolutely horrible for anybody who wants to expand um, their fish repertoire in any real way so it's unfortunate oh jelly jelly tank would be cool too i really want to get a mantis shrimp tank that's one of the things that I would love to have, a peacock mantis shrimp. I would really, really love to have one of those. Um, they, are, they are considered some of the worst worst uh, pests, though, that you can get. Um, and basically the reason is because they, they are very, very kill-happy. Um, they will kill a lot of stuff. Um, but, um, but yeah, the... Um, uh, so, marine angelfish tend to be mm, just sort of docile. They're, they're okay. I will say the dwarf angelfish especially tend to be more docile. Um, the biggest thing when it comes to marine fish of all sorts is that if you give them the space that they need, then they'll always be pretty much okay. Like, honestly, that's that's essentially all it boils down to. So, yeah. But yeah, the mantis shrimp is amazing. Like, I, I would legitimately love to have a mantis shrimp. Um, it's, it is one that has to have its own tank, because they, they will kill pretty much anything. Um... But yeah, ha having one of those would be really, really cool. Um, I've in the past I have debated getting like a, like a little five gallon tank um, that would exclusively be for a a mantis shrimp, like literally nothing else but a mantis shrimp and maybe a couple of little corals type of thing, um, just to have um, like some movement and flow and that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, mantis shrimp are they're so, so pretty. Um, to my recollection, there's two major types. Uh, well, so type is an awkward sort of term when it comes to mantis shrimp. Um, there, there's a couple of major species or subspecies, I guess you could say. Um, there is the, um, there's the tiger mantis and the, um, and the, uh, there's the tiger mantis and the uh, peacock mantis. Like I said, for, for me personally, I would rather have the peacock mantis because it's more colorful. Uh, but the tiger mantis is another neat one. As far as quote-unquote types, you have the slicers and the smashers, as they are colloquially known. The um, slicers are called as such because they actually have claws that look like praying mantis claws. And they go like, like that. Um, the Smashers will use um, essentially um, chitinous hammer-like appendages to literally bash prey. Um, and typically it'll be um, snails and hermit crabs and stuff like that. Um, and so they'll, they'll smash the shells and then eat them, basically. Um, so yeah, um, a lot of people really don't like mantis shrimp. Um, same thing for pistol shrimp. A lot of people are not big fans of pistol shrimp. Um, I think pistol shrimp are cool, but it's one of those things where it's kind of a tough sell 
because pistol shrimp can be a bit difficult to deal with. You think that I can do here? All of these doors are fake. Yeah, so freshwater angelfish are jerk faces. Um, saltwater angelfish tend to not be jerk faces. And um, you can actually have decent schools of saltwater angelfish if you've got the space for them. Um, I was actually really, really sad because the other day I found, um, I found something really, really cool. I found, uh, it's, it's actually a new company uh, or relatively new company of um, makers of, uh, what's it called? Makers of, um, what's it called? Oh my God, tanks. And this, uh, this particular company has like crazy, legitimate, massive, awesome tanks that have everything that you need. It's not like the basic cabinet and tank and a really simple sump type of thing. Um, now, it, it doesn't come with lights, but from my perspective, that doesn't matter. But these have like professional grade sumps that have the space for every single thing that you could possibly need in order to grow like everything that, that you could want to have in your tank. Um, and I'm so sad because they are so expensive and it's just ridiculous. And I just, I wish so hardcore that I could get one, but um, I have spent far, far too much money on other stuff now. I've already got other stuff going on. But like I said, you know, if anybody wants, my, my, my birthday's coming up. So at the very least, get me that that macro lens and I'll I, I will return the favor by sharing awesome pictures of all my new corals and fish <laughs> particularly if the fish survive um, I, I I always do my best for fish I really do I, I always try to help them survive but it's I don't know I, I have bad luck with fish I I just I do for some reason um, it's a mystery. But yeah. Um, so yeah, as far as the macro lens and stuff though, I've got my, I've got um, a nice uh, Canon uh, camera that I, um, that I use for, I, I use it for only a few little things, mostly making um, my thumbnail pictures for, uh, for my YouTube channel. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I try. <laughs> Get a blue plastic cup to use as a filter. A lot of people do stuff like that. Um, I mean, there there are certain things that you can do for filters. Um, there there are actually apps that are like specially, not formulated, but I guess specifically designed and designated apps um, for you to. Um, for you to go and get your um, get your fancy uh, what's it called uh, get get your fancy pictures of um, uh, fish tank stuff um, like they they basically include blue light filters on them. Uh, I for one personally love the look of the blue lights um, and. Um, like the actinic lights, especially because for the holidays, uh, my wife gave me an incredible gift. Um, she actually got me a, um, a, a set of lunar lights. And these particular lunar lights are special in multiple ways, one of which is the fact that um, it is the fact that they're controlled by my massive control scheme thing that I've got going on. But more so, they're really cool because I can, um, um, because they follow the lunar cycle. 
and it's a it's a slightly different type of blue. It's more of a turquoise-ish color that it has, and I'm just oh my god, I'm just so ah. I just want to take such really good pictures, but I can't, <laughs> and it sucks because I want to take better pictures than I can. So it's unfortunate. But yeah. Yeah, <laughs> don't have no axe. No oh, bugger. Got an axe now. Um so yeah, like that uh like I said, that lens, it's been on my list um for a really long time. I'm uh, I'm a member of a decent number of like aquarium forums and the like. And on those forums they have you know, of course, they've got various, um, like, photography-specific ones. And people will recommend, you know, specific lenses, uh, specific styles, settings, all that kind of thing. Um, so, for me personally, you guys know I do my, uh, my board game videos and all that kind of stuff. Where I've got, um... Um, within the, um... Uh, within my... Oh no! It's the sage who had been imprisoned! Um, I, I have the, um, the thumbnails that I make, and I, I use GIMP for it, which is the, the freeware Photoshop replacement. It can be really difficult to use, but I found some settings that work reasonably well. Um, like, I'm able to open up the RAW files, the .raws from the Canon camera, and do the um, do the, the stuff that needs to be done in order to make the fish tank stuff look good. But yeah, it's um, that, that's it's one of the nice things about doing fresh water is the fact that you don't have to worry about lighting too much um, unless you're doing a planted tank. Um, so Rev, like I know you're doing a planted tank, and so it's a little bit different because of course you need light uh, for plants um but I've, I've known people who have done like the like the freshwater saltwater and brackish combination stuff and it's so so cool to look at when people do it right it is absolutely amazing to see some of it <sighs> so this is the penultimate um not uh, not penultimate boss, but penultimate dungeon boss set that we have, um, and I believe that they are referred to as Twin Robia in this game. I don't remember, but um, they're not super difficult. I remember exactly how to beat them. Um, the question is whether or not I'll be able to actually do so. We'll see. Hey, look at that, Twin Roba! I was close. So the idea here is that I need to naturally use um, the the new power that I had been given in the form of the mirror shield. And effectively what I need to do is I need to um, I need to take the... I need to take it and basically do that. And hit the other one. And I think I need to just keep this up for a little bit and then eventually they start to fall down and I can start slashing them. I think. But I'm not 100% sure about that. It's, it's been... It's been long enough since I played this game that I don't remember for sure. We'll see. Ah. So hang on, you said something. So you could go down Key West over the winter. What? That is so cool! Dentist was a dive partner with Jacques Cousteau? That is freaking amazing, dude. That is so cool. Like that—that that is like 
That is legit incredible and amazing and awesome. Okay, so now I'm not 100% sure what to do. Need to try to keep them both, uh, at least mostly in frame. I, I find it difficult to tell when they're going to do, like, the, uh, the big attack. Oh, now they get serious. So I think this is when they turn into the one, um, the, the single witch. Concept is still the same, though. Dude, that is so cool. Like that is that is really amazing. I am I'm so jealous. Very poor. Very, very poor. Oh, shoot. Dang it. Luckily, I got my fairy, so I'm okay. But yeah, I, um, that's, that's one of the other things that I wish I could do as well is, um, is dive. Um, I, I've, I've gone scuba diving. I love scuba diving, but I can't. Um, I, I don't have my certification and stuff. I, it, it's been on my list for so, so many years to be able to go and do scuba diving. Nah, I'll just wait for the fire alarm instead. Um, yeah, it's just, ugh. Because scuba diving is so much fun, and I, I've done reef diving of all different sorts. I've done, um, well, I guess it's mostly just reef diving. Because, uh, you know, when, when you're not um, certified, you're not really allowed to do a whole lot. <laughs> Unfortunately. So you gotta do what you can. But either way. Oh, the ear issues. Oh, the Master Sword is better for this one. Yeah, because you can actually block while you have the thing out. I can definitely see that. But it's not a huge deal. Um, yeah, I, I absolutely adore scuba diving. Um, like I said, I've been a few times, and I would love to do it again. Part of the problem is... It, so, the, so the biggest issue that I have with scuba diving, honestly, it's not the... Um, well, it's many things, but, um, the, oh, wait, hang on. Look at this, I'm being all casual. <laughs> Beat her like it's nothing. Ain't nothing. Because I'm amazing. Hey! <laughs> What's that above your head? I don't know, but you got one too! Uh. I'm only 400 and I'm only 380. We're toys, don't try to lie. I, I feel like I need to make these two into my D&D &D campaign somehow. Like, I, I really have to. 
Because this is just hilarious and amazing and awesome. Um, but I digress. Um, doing the uh, doing scuba diving is awesome. I, I love it. I want to do it. I wish I could do it. Uh, I mean, like, actually do it. But unfortunately, I can't. Um, the expense of the training is less of an issue, thankfully. Um, because I've... Like, I'm... <laughs> Well, I, I talked last time about how the, uh, the like, my, my bosses are working a little bit more to realize that even within an academic setting, you need to have some kind of retention, especially of people who have a significant amount of experience. So, yeah. It's not complicated, people. Um, but either way, um, yeah, it's, um, it's an interesting thing. We'll, um, I, I, I hope to be able to do scuba diving full on and all that kind of thing, but the, the biggest issue isn't the initial expense of getting certification. The bigger issue is going out and actually doing it. Because, like, if you don't have a boat, if you don't have your own equipment, if you don't have the time, all of that kind of stuff, then it's just so much wasted nothingness. And that's why it sucks. It's really unfortunate. And I, I wish that I could, but if memory serves, I think Winnis is a, um, is, um, a relatively avid scuba diver. Which I'm super jealous of. But, yeah. So sad. So sad. <sighs> Either way. Yeah, it's, um, it, it's gotten to the point now where I've, I've spent a ridiculous amount of money on a bunch of somewhat ridiculous things. I, I like to think they're not all completely ridiculous. Um, but they... Oh, uh, well... A lot of them are pretty ridiculous. <laughs> so, what, what are you going to do? Uh, let me see. I'm trying to remember now what I can do with the mirror shield. So, the problem now is I know I need to get the hover boots. That's the issue now. I have to get the hover boots for the uh, Shadow Temple. And I am trying to remember where I get them. Uh... I don't remember. Either that or the hover boots are like the thing that you earn from them. But either way, I need them. Oops, I, I forgot to equip the ocarina as well. I can do it a little bit by sound. I, I totally can, honestly. Incidentally, I started this thing um, accidentally. Um, I started the Shadow Temple um, without intending to, <laughs> technically. Um, but yeah, so in order to um, in order to start this, you actually need Din's fire, uh, which I now have, so I'm able to do it because you have to light all of these things at the same time. But yeah. Oh yeah, Gerudo theme is like is best theme ever, like no doubt. Like j just the beginning part, the whole like that that whole shtick that they got there, freaking awesome. Like it is legit amazing. So yeah. There we go. 
I wasn't sure if it was a thing where you just had to wait a long time for it to work or what. Yeah, I knew I needed the sacred feet. That's what I said. I, I know I have to get the hover boots, I just don't remember where to get them from. I will say it gets really annoying how often they talk about the Eye of Truth. Although I will say that I was legit scared of the um, the Shadow Temple when I was a kid. It, it, it is a, a pretty spooky temple. And to be fair, you honestly don't need the... Oh, oh no. No, 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 I don't want it, I don't want it, I don't want it, I don't want it, I don't want it. No. I hate this thing so much. No, I hate it. Yeah, the, like, the, the Shadow Temple is legit pretty spooky. I mean, it's... I mean, obviously that's kind of the whole shtick, but it's still spooky. <laughs> and I'm not a fan. <laughs> I, I am not a fan of the Shadow Temple to this day. It is... These might be the hover boots, actually. See, I'm sitting here worried about where I get the hover boots. Yay! There you go. <laughs> trust in the boots. <laughs> what if I want to trust the eye of truth? Um, actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to head back to the thing real quick. There it is. Um, so I want to head back to Kekariko to check on the, um, the Gold Skeleta folks, because I, um, I had a... Um, I, I, I got up to 30, and so it's at least a nice round number. I don't know if that means that I'll be able to get something from them, but I might be able to, so I'm going to check and see. Just real quick. But yeah, the, uh, I, I will say the Shadow Temple has my favorite boss. I love the boss of the Shadow Temple. Bongo Bongo is legit awesome. He is so cool. Like... <laughs> I don't know what it is about him, but it, it's just, I don't know, it just makes me laugh. It's so much fun. He literally slaps. He does. That is very true. Better not be something stupid. Yay! Awesome! God, that's what I've been waiting for, for like, ever. Now, if memory serves, I think there's a hundred gold skeletas, um, in total hidden throughout the game. Um, I don't particularly care to find them all. Um, I actually never have, legitimately. I've done it in the not-so-legitimate way. And I don't care what you have to say about that, you know? You can just go suck an egg. Mm -hmm. But, uh, point being, that I've done it, so... <laughs> the shame bell. Ethan tests life. Can't say I've seen you around, so first, welcome. And secondly, yes. The Shadow Temple is... It, it is the one that will 
mess you up. It is just creepy AF. I to that end, I will say they did a great job with it. I mean, they they wanted to create Temple of Spooky, and they made a Temple of fucking Spooky. So, and that yes, I know. Um, so in that sense, they uh, they definitely did their job. Oh good, it's still open. I wasn't sure if it would be. Favorite game of all time? Nice. It's a good choice. I mean, it's, it is it is the choice of many, and it is the rightful choice of many. I will say. It is truly an incredible game. That said, anybody have any speculation? Um, since we are now officially in the month of Legend of Zelda. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, on the 35th anniversary of Mario, it is when they announced the, um, or rather, that is when they announced the, the whole shtick for the um, 3D All-Stars. So, what do you guys think is gonna happen with Legend of Zelda? Do you, do you think they're gonna do anything? Oh, freaking redead! No, 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 f you, back off! No, 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 no! I, I am, I, I am going to nope out of this. No, 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 no. Switch remastering. Oh, get off me, you son of a biscuit! So I I would love to see an an Ocarina of Time slash um, slash Majora's Mask redo on uh, on Switch. I think that's probably their best bet. Um, I was talking about this earlier um, on another stream. Where the problem is that, unlike with Mario, there are a lot of, um, not canonical, but I guess main titles for Legend of Zelda that came out within and beyond the, um, what's it called? Um, within and beyond, um, the N64. So obviously with um, Mario 3D All-Stars, the, um, the only one that they could do was the only one that existed, which was Mario 64. But for Legend of Zelda, they had Ocarina of Time as well as, um, as, well as having Majora's Mask. So are we gonna get to see both? Are we going to see one? Are we going to see neither? Are we going to see anything? I mean, I don't know. I I legitimately hope that we'll be able to see something at least, because that would be awesome. Um, and if it has any semblance of the relative incredibleness that we've been able to see from um, the 3D All Star remake with Mario, it would be really cool. So yeah, I'm I'm very curious on folks' speculation for it. Um, like uh, just to, just as a, a quick recap of everything, we had um, what's it called? So we had Majora's Mask and um, and we had uh, Ocarina of Time on the N64, and then we had the GameCube, which actually included the um, Ocarina of Time, not, I want to say Master Mix, <laughs> thinking about science, um, but the, uh, the Master Quest, that's what it is, the Master Quest edition, um, but then on GameCube as a release, we had Wind Waker, which was such a completely different thing, just like with, um, Mario, they had Mario Sunshine, which was, of course, very different from other Mario games at the time. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. 
<laughs> Picked up 3D All Stars to bribe your wife. <laughs> Not finished the Skyward Sword. Oh, uh, okay. So yeah, and that and that's the thing is like Skyward Sword is um, I honestly don't remember if I finished Skyward Sword. To be frank, I don't think I did. But, um, yeah, of course, Skyward Sword was the, the one for the Wii, and then there was the, the crossover GameCube slash Wii, um, game of, uh, Twilight Princess. And, obviously, Twilight Princess was pretty popular. Everybody loved Twilight Princess. Uh, which, you know, it, it was great. I personally had it on the Wii, though, so I got kind of the short end of that particular stick because it is not a great game on the Wii, unfortunately. Oh, you subscribed! Thank you so much! Thanks for the sub, I really appreciate it. Now I need to try and remember what this thing does, if I can. I'm also trying to remember what the, what the thing is, what the, what you get from here. Is it ice arrows? I don't think it's ice arrows. Um, oh man, now I gotta do squats. Dang it. The celebration squats. Um, but yeah, so we had uh, Wind Waker, which is one of my personal favorites. I love Wind Waker. Um, that's one of my favorites. Um, hmm, what else? Uh, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, so, let's think. There was Wind Waker on GameCube, and then Twilight Princess slash was on GameCube slash Wii. And then there was Skyward Sword, which was exclusively on Wii. And then on Wii U, I don't think there was one for Wii U. Either way, point being is that there was more stuff. There's more stuff to do um, as far as Legend of Zelda is concerned. And I think the, um, like the official date is the 21st of this month for the, uh, what's it called? Oh Tuh. Dang it, I'm trying to remember what I need to do here. I do not remember. At some point, I could have sworn that these things were invisible. Maybe that was in the Master Quest version, is that these guys were invisible. I literally have like three re rooms that I'm able to go to. But yeah. They're invisible in a different room, okay. But I knew they were invisible at some point. So I was already in here because I got the I got the compass in here. But there was nothing else. I don't really have a map per se. Huh. Interesting. So this is the long hallway. And then it seems like there should be a room on the other side as well. Maybe I just need to bomb that wall. Oh, it's something stupid like that. Told you it was something stupid. 
But, uh, but yeah, I, um, dang it, really. Um, so yeah, I, I hope that they announce something similar to what they did with, with Mario, because frankly, Legend of Zelda deserves it. Um, I just, I, I, honestly, I'm worried about the fan base. Because people within the Legend of Zelda community especially are so zealous about certain things and certain games, or I should say specific games, that I can see it becoming very, very uh, argumentative very quickly. And I don't like that fact. Because it's like, I just want to play cool games. That's all. And y'all are sitting here ruining my fun. Oh, dang it. I hate this. Yeah, this is, um, so incidentally, um, Ethan, uh, I'm just calling, call you Ethan. I'm going to assume that is your name and it's easier than saying Ethan Test Life. Um, um, I, I will say that for me personally, this is not my favorite game of all time, but it is certainly up there in terms of games that I really love, without a doubt. Um, I would say that I enjoy Majora's Mask a little bit more, though, personally. Uh, and honestly, I, I went out and... This is where they're invisible. There we go. Uh, honestly, part of the reason why I went out and bought, like, Nintendo 64 stuff was solely so I could play Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time again. Like, no joke. I, I was just like, I, I need this in my life. I have to do it. It is a simple requirement. So yeah, very exciting. That would be cool. Some some kind of uh, some kind of toggles would be awesome. A symphonic track would be amazing. Like don't I mean don't get me wrong. They they I I get the whole eerie tone shtick that they that they go for with this, especially in the spirit temple type of thing. But yeah. Okay. Uh, learn a word. Learn a word. What is what is the word of the day? Oh, so we can do um, we'll do German. We will do the the classic of Frau und Herr. So Frau und Herr are effectively man and woman, um, most often referred to in the context of man and wife. Um, so just like you have, um, you know, your, um, your spouse, essentially, it's the same concept. Now, why is Navi giving a brief over here? There's, there's nothing over here, girl. Is this something where I gotta play the song with time? Because she does that sometimes. Uh, but yeah, so you'll you'll also hear like Fraulein. Um, there's a there's a lot of um, TV shows and movies and stuff like that that'll use where you'll hear the term Fraulein or like the wicked Fraulein and stuff like that. And so they're basically talking about the evil woman or the mean woman and things like that. Um, so there you go. Technically could be good, could be bad, depending on your opinion of things. Just trying to... Okay, so there's another bat in here. I'm 
I'm just thinking that it's a whole defeat all the baddies to make the treasure chest appear. But, or at least unlock the gate type of thing. Is it call time? Oh dang, it is call time. Shoot, yeah. And I actually have to go because um, I'm 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 actually going to be giving a um, a talk um, this evening, and so I have to finalize up all my slides for that. So let me just uh, let me just try to f um, try to wrap this up. See if I can figure it out. Uh, yes, exactly, Rev. You'll, you'll also hear it as Mr. or Mrs. as well. Um, it's, it's a, they're, they're relatively dynamic in that sense. Um, but either way, you know. Basically, you know, man and wife, husband and wife, etc., etc. That whole shtick. Alright, perfect. So this is what I, what I was hoping to do, is to at least get these. Now I'm not seeing the fact that the floor is vanishing underneath me or anything, so I'm going to go ahead and pick these up. Really? A blue rupee? Really? Oh, they're invisible treasure chests. Gotcha. Well, that'll do it. Okay. All right, cool. So, that is going to be it for me for today. Um, so, thank you all so much for stopping by. Ethan, thank you so much for subscribing and for following. I really, really appreciate it. Um, yeah, like I said, I got to get going. Um, I'm, I'm actually... It's funny you say it's a TED Talk. Um, it actually is about um, COVID. I'm going to be talking about um, the, uh, the genetics of COVID and um, in the context of the mutations, vaccines, vaccine effectiveness, all of that kind of stuff. So it should be pretty interesting. Um, we'll, we'll see if the folks like it. Um, I hope that they do. But, uh, but yeah, you guys all take care of yourselves. Um, I will be back on Saturday with um, Origami King. And next week, so next Monday, I will be doing Animal Crossing. I'll be doing New Horizons. We got the, uh, we got the update not too long ago. Um, and so that added some pretty nifty little stuff. So I'm going to resave just to be safe. Um, so, um, we're, uh, I'm going to be doing that. Hopefully it'll be enjoyable. Um, we'll, we'll see what all is there. Um, the Valentine's thing is coming up, so I might do something for that as well. But like I said, everybody take care, have a fun time. And again, if you happen to find like a bar of gold, or any of that kind of thing. My birthday is coming up and I would love to get that sweet, sweet macro lens so that I can take awesome pictures of all my fish and corals for you guys because I've got new stuff coming in or I will have new stuff coming in. But with that, bye everybody. Stay safe, be well, and hopefully we'll see you all on Saturday.